This is Actar's Reviews, from anime to figures and beyond. Hey, this is that time. Yes, I am back. After a longer than expected hiatus, thanks to a combination of foreseen and unforeseen circumstances. And uh, yeah, welcome to another episode of Actar's Figure Reviews. And to commemorate my return, something a little different. Today, we are taking a look at a revolutionary super robot figure from Freeing and GSC, the Dynamic Change Getter Robo. The Getter Robo is definitely one of the most famous 1970s classic super robots of all time, alongside other classics like the Mazinga Z, Combatler V, Voltus V and Raideen. One of the most impressive features of the Getter Robo that set itself apart from the other robots of the time was that it introduced the concept of modular transformation and combination. The Getter series will go on to have numerous other sequels and interpretations such as Getter G, Getter Robo Go, Shin Getter Robo, New Getter Robo, so on and so forth. Even after all these years, Possibly due to the anime magic that is used to allow the Getter's transformation, we never did get an affordable, fully transformable Getter Robo figure. Until now. Some of you might remember Studio Half Eye's Perfect Change Getter Robo Raisin Kit. While that figure was fully transformable and a miracle of engineering, its price was also a miracle. At 60,000 yen retail price, Averaging about, I don't know, 700 or more US dollars, it was nigh unobtainable even by my insane otaku standards. Not to mention, it was also made with very, very brittle raisin. And that brings us to the figure that Freeing has come up with the Dynamic Change Getter Robo. This is the answer to all us Getter Robo fans' dreams, a perfectly transformable Getter Robo figure that is able to convert between the individual Get machines and all three forms. Of course, there are a couple of liberties that have been taken with the figure, the most obvious of which is that the figure is an uh, SD or super deformed, chibified rendition of the actual Getter Robo, most likely in a bid to make it more affordable and to improve the overall structural integrity. Already, just the packaging alone blows me out of the water. Instead of a run-of-the-mill collector's flip-top lid box design, we get this very sleek and stylish plastic tube that allows you to see all three Gatch machines with ease. Not only that, they are made out to look like they are just about to launch. The display and collector-friendly nature of this package can also be witnessed from the individual names of the Getter machines on the tops, accompanied with one of the three modes of the Getter Robo on the bottom. Definitely, unequivocally, one of the most superb and, well, dynamic packaging designs that I have seen in a while. So, without further ado, let's open this up and take a look at the content inside. Something that really impresses me is that unlike many other instruction booklets and manuals, the instruction sheet is in full colour and is illustrated using actual pictures of the toy. This does make it really easy to follow even if you don't read any Japanese. First off, let's take a look at the individual Get Machines. Like me, when you first get these out of the package, you might be surprised to find out that the toy itself is made of surprisingly light plastic. I mean, there's hardly any weight to these. However, contrary to how they feel, do note that the entire toy is made from one of the highest quality and solid plastics around, ABS. Yes, not the usual PVC, but ABS. The two red bars that you see in bed that are necessary for the transformation are made out of a more flexible POM. But I think that it was a deliberate move to prevent possible breakage. 
From the tops and from certain angles, these mini get machines look great. They do a decent job in capturing their animated counterparts to the best of their ability. I mean, yeah, there are inaccuracies such as the missing tail fin on Eagle, and you can see quite a bit of robot kibble. Again, that's a term used to refer to parts of one mode that isn't supposed to be seen in another. Uh, this is most evident from the sides and bottoms such as the arms and the head on Eagle the tank treads on Jaguar and the arms on Bear but they are hidden and tucked away quite well and considering what this toy can do I would be hard pressed to complain Paint and details wise they got most of the important details spot on such as the respective painted cockpits and the honeycomb pattern on Ego and now what everyone has been waiting for the transformation Change Guitar 1 かいいの血が真っ赤に燃えて。ゲッタースパーク、空高く。ミタカ、ガッタイ、ゲッタロボだ。ガッ、ガッ、ゲッタ、ガッ。三つの心が一つになれば。I present the most iconic and recognizable form of the Getta Robo, Getta 1. And being the most iconic, it does look exceptionally good. From the front, turning the figure to the side reveals a gigantic backpack of kibble. This unfortunately is unavoidable no matter how you spin it, and even the Studio Half-Eye version had a gigantic backpack. Thankfully, turning the figure completely around, we can see that the back is painted red to mimic Getter 1's cape. The backpack does create some balancing issues, but as you can see, positioning him in a sort of a crotch thrust position allows him to stand perfectly on his own. Other than the backpack, the only other kibble to be found is Getter 3's arms on the backs of Getter 1's legs and Getter 3's rockets making out Getter 1's thighs. In terms of articulation, Getter 1 is the most articulated out of all three forms. It has a ball jointed head. Its arms can move forwards and backwards and in and out at the shoulder joint. His wrists can rotate and his legs can move in and out. Lastly, its feet are on ball joints. Unlike all the other Getter forms, Getter 1 comes with his very own pair of accessories, the Getter Tomahawks, his signature weapons. Very nicely detailed, what with the metallic airbrushed look. So together with his articulation, you can get Getter 1 into a number of awesome poses, but you will have to work past that back heaviness. The Tomahawks can be stored on the sides of Getter 1's backpack, but sadly they have no place to go in any of the Getter's other forms. I won't be commenting on this for each mode, but there really isn't too much paint on this toy. However, every necessary detail is indeed there. The thing that really surprised me is that instead of paint, many of the different coloured parts are actually made of separate pieces of moulded coloured plastic, such as the white plastic on the arms and the arm spikes, and the yellow and red on his feet. To me, this just adds to the overall quality of the figure. Not to mention, this also means that one need not worry about paint scraping off when playing with this figure. And lastly, for those who are wondering, the figure itself isn't too huge even when combined, being approximately only 12cm tall. So that pretty much covers Getter 1, now on to Getter 2. Open Get! Change Getter 2! And 
here we have Getter 2. Getter 2 I think suffers the most out of all three modes, as in addition to the huge backpack that isn't masked by anything, he only has two very very tiny feet to balance on. While it can indeed stand by itself, you must lean it forward at an angle. Other kibble in this form includes its legs, which are obviously Getter 1's arms when seen from the back. For articulation, Getter 2 has ball joints in its shoulders and feet, and its legs can move at this ball joint and this joint which was Getter 1's shoulder joint. You can get even more articulation by playing around with the transformation joints. For instance, this joint by rotating it sideways, you can use Getter 1's shoulder joint as a new forward leg joint. Thankfully, its drill can spin, but on the other hand, um, literally, its claw cannot move at all. Would have loved to have seen the claw be able to at least open and close. Aside from those negatives, the toy still manages to pull off a rather convincing getter to mode, and you can get him into some neat poses if you play around with the transformation joints. All the details are there including the painted arms and black belt around his waist. And with that, we are done with getter 2. On to the final form, getter 3. Open get! Change getter 3! we come to the most underused getter form, getter 3. In toy form, it is well balanced, being, well, on a tank, and it also has very few significant kibble issues, with only the arms and legs of getter 1 being visible from the back. Yeah, we also have the feet of getter 1 obscuring its hands, but again, there's really nothing much that can be done about it. Articulation-wise, the arms can be posed. However, to do so, you must first extend the rod slightly, to be able to reposition them. You can also move the arms forwards and backwards by using this swivel joint that is in the head missile. The arms can also rotate at the shoulder and his hands can move side to side. In conclusion, I do admit that there are some downsides to the figure such as issues with the kibble in the various modes and the lack of articulation. Still, one cannot discount the fact that this figure is magnificent in the sense that it is an engineering feat on Freeing's part as they have managed to capture the nigh impossible to replicate Getter Robo's transformation in reality. At the risk of sounding horrendously repetitious, I cannot emphasize how good the engineering on this toy is. The transformation is fun and ingenious, however it can get somewhat fiddly, especially when transforming the figure for the first few times. Each of the modes are clearly recognizable and the build quality, while seemingly fragile, is brilliant. The plastics are solid, the joints are nice and tight, and the figure holds together very well in all three modes. Though I am kind of worried that they will wear out with time, uh, but that of course remains to be seen. The colors, molding, and paint details of the robot are clean, sharp, and striking. Overall, this is just a good, fun figure all around for both play and display. And if you want to, thanks to the myriad of joints on it, you can even create your own original getter combinations. And the icing on the cake? The packaging is freaking phenomenal. The price of the figure is definitely a little high, especially for a figure of this size, but I think it is not unwarranted as I would suppose a ton of money went into the designing and manufacturing of this toy. And technically speaking, this is nothing when compared to the Studio Half-Fi version. Finally, all I have left to say is that this figure is truly a milestone in the Getter toy universe and is a must-get. Um, pun unintentional, if you are a fan of the series, a fan of classic 70s super robot shows, or even just a robot figure fan that loves interesting transformations. As a huge fan of the Getter Robo myself, I cannot tell you how much I am in love with this figure and you will not regret picking this up. So this is Zekta saying, see you guys in the next episode.